Hello everyone, this is Mike Check 95 and we are continuing our review series of the Alien and Predator hey. series. I am Mike Check 95 along with our usual cohorts. Say my name, say my name. Like and and we have uh, I guess officially started with the better franchise, I would say, of the Alien Universe with Prometheus. The box office Bo was hundred and thirty million. <laughs> And they they grossed worldwide four hundred and three million dollars. Four hundred and sixty nine dollars. It was better internationally than it was nationally because the gross for US Canada was only hundred and twenty six million. Okay, so this movie was bad. Elaborate. Um, I didn't like it. <laughs> Some of the CGI wasn't like cheesy bad CGI, but it was cheesy good CGI. I understand that they're starting the world building. I understand that Alien is historically slow, but my god, this felt like a four hour film. It had a good cast, oh, the yeah. ending was good. Um, if I could, I would I would give that, that little guy at the end a collar. Alien being not just an alien like I saw in the last couple is cool. The whole surgery thing was really good. That's it. So Ready? Four. It's too slow. I hate the Alien series because it's slow. I would like to, to mention our cohort may or may not be biased in the same way others were biased in other series. It's true. I am biased against the Alien series because they're not as good as the Predators. Hurting around post-surgery, it's not a thing you should normally do, but 100% practical. I like the sci-fi in this. Uh, the world building in this, sci-fi meaning the weird mutated all kinds of good stuff. Love you too, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> the mutations, the the interaction with aliens, the aliens looking certain ways, um, the planet being different, having the different kinds of tech, that aspect of sci-fi and aliens. A lot of movies just like, hey, big head, big eyes, green guy, alien. I mentioned world building and the fact that it expands upon the universe versus, hey, it's Earth or some random undisclosed area of space mm -hmm. where there just happens to be a ship. Like, it's actually like, hey, we're doing a thing, and this is a thing. I like the human uh, interaction and the, you know, hey, I'm a human. I have humanity. Also, hi, I'm a human, and I'm bad. Also, hi, I'm a human, and I want to know what my maker is, even even if it causes a bunch of people to get mutated and, you know, possibly kill all of Earth. I like this movie because it has the, the cunning twist of David. I like that aspect because he's curious. Like a, a human, like a, like a small child. What I mean by that is, he he doesn't. He's like a small child, and then he doesn't understand adult things like taxes and taxes. You know, other things that make life droning. He's he's he doesn't understand consequences. He doesn't understand a lot of things, and so he just goes about the things like a young kid would. Oh, I'm just gonna poke that frog. Hopefully, it doesn't die. If it does die, who cares? We'll get another one. So you know. Which is good if you're him, but if you're not him, you know, you die. So that's kind of fun because what? it's that, that aspect of him being a robot and how he interacts with the regular humans. And, you know, doesn't everybody want to kill their parents? No. Weird highlight. I very much like the flute scene where they play the flute as a way to unlock. And when I unlock the ship, and I think that's cool because if you watch a bunch of movies, spaceship flying is very different. What I mean by that is Americans, I mean, uh, sorry, humans, as humans, we don't have the same kind of things. Our riding tools aren't the same. Our eating tools aren't the same. And so our driving vehicles aren't the same, and therefore our driving vehicle controllers aren't the same. The movie does drain a little bit at certain points. Dialogue is good at certain points, which I do like, but other parts, it's just kind of weird kind of leaves a weird funk in the air. I'm going to give this a 7, which is worth my time. So, um, this is probably my fifth or sixth time watching this movie. This is a film where I can understand why people don't understand what's going on. They feel like there's a lot of unanswered questions, where it's like, if you actually sit down and pay attention to what's going on, I understand that there was other influences going on during this review. If you were to sit down and actually watch this film, and actually watch 
every little second and put all the pieces together, every single question, except for the ones that were meant for the sequel, were answered in this film. Well, this film doesn't make any sense. It's because you're not paying attention, or you're just a casual movie movie viewer goer who just wants the whole thing spoon fed to you. I actually gratefully enjoy this film, and I actually enjoy it more every time I watch it. Because for one, it's not only focused on the aliens of the universe; it's focused on like other stuff, like the big, the big dudes, which they're called. They don't say it in the movie, but they're called engineers in the film. I think they do call them engineers in the film. In my opinion, David makes the movie. Hello. I'm David. No, the director makes the movie. The da David makes the movie, the pretty much. Movie. Every time I watch this film, it makes, me, it makes me excited. Like, I was maybe ten minutes into this movie, and I already wanted to stop the film and watch Covenant. Because I've seen this film so many times, I get excited, and I'm like, this film is so good. Let's go watch Covenant next. Long story short, people, the people in this room may think I'm fucking crazy, but this film gets an eight, eight and a half for me because I feel like this film gets too much of a bad rep. So you're giving it a high score because people give it a low score. My it, my it, this film eight. gets too much of a bad rep universally and it needs more appreciation. <laughs> This is a film that you need to watch wide awake and... Yeah, wide awake. And, awake. I guess, with, yeah, a, with, a, with a clear mind, I should say. Mm. A clear mind. I do want to say that this film does require a lot of thinking, too, because you have to pay attention yeah. very, very, very carefully in this film. You also don't. They pretty much say everything is important. They do say, but at the same time, there's little pieces here and there where they don't say, and you have to be like, okay, that makes sense. I love this film probably more than a lot of people a lot of people in the world do. But and again, everyone has their own opinion. Like we have Marjorie here who hates two and a half hour films because he's a boring ass motherfucker. Just kidding. <laughs> so the next time you shall see us, or at least me, Orphan Joker and Creaker Margin for the most part, um we will be covering uh, the next film in the Alien Universe, I believe. Alien 1. We will be watching Alien Covenant. Oh. The film that I am really excited for because, you know. Is it Alien Covenant? Oh, that's right. It's Covenant. But until then, this is Mike Check 95 along with the man behind the camera right now, Orphan Joker. <laughs> the man who should have been behind the camera. We shall see you in the next review for Alien Covenant. Oh, my God.